description of who you are and what you do? Uh, yeah. So my name is Nick Wood, and I have a program and slash course where I teach you know basically anybody off the street, anybody that has a voice and a computer, uh, how to go and make passive income through digital real estate. And essentially, what that is is we pick local markets in niches like tree service, concrete, etc. We build simple websites. We rank them to the top of Google. And we uh, rent those websites to local business owners for a basically a monthly fee every single month. And we own the assets. They pay us every single month. And we rinse and repeat. So, um, yeah, that's what – I mean, I've, I've done a lot of other stuff. I've got some other stuff cooking. But that is the – that is at this very moment of recording this, that is what is all-consuming of my time and my, my, uh, my attention and everything else. Awesome. Cool. So that's kind of what I thought it was. So <laughs> – Perfect, dude. Beautiful. I know you have a, a commercial portfolio you're building out is what it looks like online. Yeah, no, I've got a couple properties. Uh, it's not huge yet. That's the goal, though. So my game plan right now is I'm making as much possible money as I can with digital real estate, and I'm taking that and parlaying it into uh, physical real estate, specifically commercial. So I've got a couple office spaces here where I live locally that I have my team in. I rent to a salon, one of the other ones. Um, I've got a... a you know, a bigger property out in Arkansas with some partners and I am actively hunting for one or two more before the end of the year. Uh, so if anybody that's listening to this or yourself included, dude, uh, if you got any leads for me, hit me up. Yeah. Um, I'm doing multiple commercial deals, but I usually do commercial like residential. Um, haven't gotcha. dipped my fingers into like the commercial office space yet. Um, which is why I was interested in your deals, how they're going. Um, do you mind diving into some of the numbers if you still remember them? For sure. Let me do this. Um, let me change. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Still? Yep. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Yeah, you can, right? Yep, still can. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah. So what? What? So we like. You mean like how much we have into the deal and what our numbers are and stuff like that, or what do you mean? So purchase price, what your down payment was, you know, what you bought it at, and what you're able to. It sounds like you maybe added tenants in after the fact of purchasing it. So maybe you bought it vacant. You know, kind of walk through what that first commercial okay. looked like. Yeah. So there was. Uh, yeah. Here locally, I have. A, I have a company. So. Um, on top of the program that the, the stuff that I teach, I also have my own portfolio of digital real estate assets where I have uh, anywhere between 30 and 40 business owners at any time that are renting my properties from me. And I say at any time it fluctuates because it's just like rental properties, right? Sometimes tenants move out. Sometimes you have to evict. And so there's a little bit of churn that sometimes happens, but um, I have a company and so we have our employees that rent part of the space and then I rent the rest out. So what happened is we were in another building and then uh, with COVID, all that stuff, we ended up just kind of like getting out of our lease because it was over. And then I kind of realized, okay, this sucks. Like I need to be seeing human bodies. I want to be able to like interact, whatever. So I, instead of going and getting another lease, I just said, well, wh what else? Is there anything I could actually buy? Is there something I could purchase? And so I just reached out to this guy that I knew. And he's like, funny you say that. There's somebody, somebody that I know that's selling a couple of these properties. And so anyway, we went in and I bought these two. I think uh, both of the properties combined. It was a really good deal. Uh, I think it ended up being like 550 to 600K for these properties. For, for both and ones? these are keep in mind, yeah, for both. But keep in mind, this is I don't I think what they call this is like a uh, so it's like it's part of a huge building, right? So they're this massive building, and then they're individual owners that own offices within it. Mm -hmm. And so we bought two of these. So yeah, we have one, and we just turned around and rented it to a salon. The one downstairs, we basically gutted it, put new paint, put new floors, base base and case the whole thing, and we kicked all the tenants out. There was like all these people renting, but it was medical, right? It was like nails and it was, it was not medical, more beauty stuff, like nails and massage and all this stuff. So we kicked them out and we put in, we started just getting more tenants that were more of like business and construction and all that kind of stuff because it just made more sense for the type of business that we are because 
Nobody wants to hear somebody screaming about a sale they just got when they're getting their nails done, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's it. We got that deal. Um, between the two, um, because with the with the one that I have uh, that we gutted, that has actually seven units inside of it. Mm-hmm. So we've actually, between the two, we're, we're with our, we did a 20%. We actually did an SBA, and I thought I was going to get away with 10%. We ended up having to split the two and I ended up doing a regular commercial loan on one of them. So I'm like, I'm averaged out at 20% because I did 30% down on one, 10% on the other. But we cash flow about two grand a month uh, between the two. That's pretty good. And that's ignoring any rent you would pay as your company? Yeah, no, no, no. So that's like after, like that's including like, oh, we've already paid our rent and everything else. So it's, yeah, it's not bad. Those units, you can, there's kind of a shortage of office space here where I live. And so, you know, we're, we're charging quite a pretty penny for per square foot. Uh, but people are paying it because they're new, they're updated, it's good location. And it's just kind of like, there's not a lot out there. So we're able to get premium dollar on it. Cool. cool. And you're, yep. in, you're in what city? Utah. Uh, I'm in Utah. Uh, I'm in St. George, Utah is where I live. And then, uh, but I travel a fair amount. And so, yeah, that's, that's why you probably didn't even know that I lived in Utah. Yeah. <laughs> I got the state completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I just have, uh, another property in Arkansas because I used to live in Arkansas when I did, uh, I did used to do door to door sales. So mm-hmm. I used to live in Arkansas doing that. Cool. That was, that segues to my next question perfectly. Kind of what your upbringing was. So if you could walk me through which jobs you started from, like I started working at a Taco Bell before I, <laughs> before I started yeah, yeah. working, but uh, you know, where'd you start? So let me ask you this first. So I know how to curate this answer because not, not, I mean, it's going to be the right, it's going to be the true answer, but then maybe I can hit on a little bit better, but like, who's the, who's the, like, who's listening right now? Like who, who are we talking about? Like, is it, is it males, females? Is it people that are further in their career just starting out? Like who we talking to? We're probably talking to people who are Starting out in the careers, I believe it's around 70 to 80% males um, okay. who are, you know, usually either graduate college or just got out of high school um, looking to make money in whatever form, real estate, digital real estate, all, all different forms of, okay. of creating wealth. Awesome. Right? Okay. That helps me to understand who we're talking to. Then I can, then I can be a little bit thoughtful towards that. So. Uh, upbringing. Good question. So I grew up on a small little, like I call it a village. I grew up in a little town in Southern Utah and and I didn't even grow up in the town. We lived on the farm. So like classic farm kind of upbringing. My graduating class was 60 people. We had teachers at our high school that didn't even have college degrees. That's a true story. Uh, just a very like small town type of a thing. So Grew up uh, just what you would expect in a small town, right? Not doing a lot of technology, just more like hanging out outside, messing around. And then my dad is a farmer. He's an alfalfa farmer. Let me plug my computer in before it dies. My dad's an alfalfa farmer. And so, yeah, dude, we, we worked on the farm, man. We I remember um, just h- hating it sometimes. I'm like, dude, like, you know, all my buddies, we'd have football practice. And I, like, it, did you play football? What sports did you play? Uh, I was number one varsity tennis. Not, not as much bragging rights as football. But. Oh, that's cool, dude. Tennis is dope. Um, shout out to, uh, uh, was it Federer that just, Crushed is that, that who just plays a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so what I was going to say is there, in football, for example, like there's, you have two days, right? There's that hell week. And uh, I remember getting done with the morning practice and all my buddies like, dude, let's go over and let's play you know, PS2 or whatever it was at the time at, at so-and-so's house. And I was like, I like calling my dad. I'm like, Hey, you know, can I go? And it's like, Nope, we got work to do. Right. We got work to do. And I was like, I remember being so pissed off. Like, why, why can you not like, just like, let me chill. So I do think like that was super huge because we, we spent a lot of time doing that. A lot of time working. Um, and dude, every day that we weren't in school or playing sports, that's just what we did. So that's it, man. We grew up on the farm. And then after I got out of high school, I went and moved to West Africa and volunteered as a missionary for two years. And that was a, a whole story in and of itself. Came back and uh, started 
into college, but at the same time started selling door to door. And uh, that led me, did that for four years. And then I realized, you know, I gotta, I gotta own whatever I'm doing. And that leads us to what I'm, I'm doing now. So that's kind of the rundown. What you sell in door to door? Is it pesticides? Is it security? Security, home security systems. I, I, it's always a 50 50 shot with Utah. It's pesticides and security. It totally. like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's because, like, you know, uh, well, I think there's a lot of people here. Like, for example, I went to West Africa as a missionary, right? So I went and knocked doors for two years. So I already knew, like, I think most people that are companies like, hey, those guys are already used to getting rejected. Let's go hire them. So that's why you see a lot of people from Utah that have that experience. Yeah, it seems like a born and bred salespeople. It's the hardest thing to convert people. So it'd be hard, easier to convert someone on what security system they're using. For sure. And uh, I think too, like to your point, one thing, this is interesting that like point that I've realized after coaching a bunch of people, after recruiting salespeople is you can teach people to sell. You could teach anybody to sell. Okay. Now some people are born naturally with it, whatever they kind of like get it better, but I've learned you can teach anybody to do anything. The one thing I haven't been able to figure out is I cannot and have not been able to figure out how to teach people to work hard. And so when I'm hiring or when I'm interviewing somebody to like join my program or anything like that, I'm like, or getting sales guys, I always, I'm like, Hey, tell me about your background. What jobs have you had? What have you done? that's hard. Because if you know how to work hard and, and you've done some crappy jobs, I'm going to be able to easily teach you how to sell. That's easy. That's just saying the right things in the right way. But so I, I guess my reason I'm bringing that up is like, I think for people that are maybe just starting out, that is such a, a skill. That is such a, a trait that you, you having that is such a benefit when you're going to get a job or going to start a business or going to could be a salesperson. Like people notice that stuff. And if I don't think you can work hard, I don't care how good you are. I don't care how smooth you are. I'm not interested. I'll take the guy that's not smooth or the girl that's not smooth that works hard over the other one seven out of seven times or 10 out of 10 times, right? Yeah, that's that's a good way to figure out, especially like what they've done in the past of like what is hard work for them. I feel like a lot of people, it's if you have that actual need to make money, I think wanting to make money and needing to make money create two different mindsets. Yeah, I agree. So door-to-door -door sales, and then at what point did you quit door-to-door -door sales? And it sounds like you went straight into digital real estate. Real estate, yeah. So I did door-to-door -door sales 2013, 14, 15, and 16. In between, my 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 right around my last year, I got my last. So my third year, I made two hundred and ten thousand dollars on paper. Right, that was like my gross total. Right, and that's pretty good for for you know going door-to-door -door for five six months. But I remember the moment when I realized I had to change is I got my check and the way they do it is they pay you a little bit during the year and they pay you a big chunk at the end because they want to make sure the customers you sold actually pay their bill, right? Mm -hmm. And so they pay you in October, you get this big check. You literally wake up and you, your bank account has like 110 grand or 150 grand. It's, it's awesome, right? Call it like back end day. And I remember waking up and I looked at this, my account and I had like over 100 grand and the day before I didn't, and I was like, you think you'd be excited, you think you'd be like, oh, that's so cool. And all I could think about when I saw that, yeah, I was like, that's cool, that alleviates a lot of pressure, but at the same time, all I could think about was like, I gotta go do that again next year to make that money. I have to go knock that many doors and knock those late nights and all this different stuff. And I just realized in that moment, I'm like, hey, this is cool, this is good money, but if I put this much time and effort into something that I owned, my own thing, how successful could I be? Mm -hmm. And so that's when I really started doing some homework and exploring business opportunities. And I realized I was in a broken model, right? If you're a salesperson for somebody else, you are never going to get rich. You can't. It doesn't make sense. You don't have enough hours. No matter how much you're getting paid, you're never going to get rich because you only have a certain amount of hours, mm -hmm. right? There's no leverage. 
And so I started looking at business models. I started writing down business ideas. So between 2015 and 16, that's when I really got serious about, hey, Nick, you got to find something that's going to get you out of here. And you're probably not going to make 200 grand the first year. So you're probably going to have to take a step backwards to go 10 steps forward, right? And so in 2016, I ended up buying a program that just taught me how to do SEO, taught me how to do websites. Just, I didn't know what a website was. I didn't know what a domain was. I didn't know about backlinks and content. I didn't know this stuff, right? And maybe a lot of people listening to this are like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Good, me either. I didn't either six years ago. Bought the program and you know that kind of got me introduced to the business model. But I actually never really did anything with it. I ended up trying to start a software company and kind of running that for a year and it never really got off the ground. You know, I basically it was failed before it even started. So I didn't get like serious about doing this business until August 1st, actually July 28th of 2017. And I remember that day because that's the day when me and my wife had a conversation. She said, we have $3,000 in the bank. Our bills are due in three days. That's Our bills were about six grand at the time. And we don't have any money. And she's like, you need to go get a job because you've been chasing this pipe dream. Her own words. You've been chasing this pipe dream for way too long. It's time to start taking care of your family. And so when she said that, I was like, I'm not kidding. I'm not getting a job. I'm like, give me three days. I'll come up with the three grand. I dusted off that program I had purchased. And I'm like, I don't really know how to do SEO. I don't know how to build websites, but I know I can learn. And I just started making phone calls. And I was able to sell three websites in three days for 3000 bucks. And it bought me enough. My wife's like, okay, you have a month to prove to me this is actually going to pay our bills. And then from there, I just, I haven't done anything else since. Nice. So yeah, a little messy. Every story is messy. And for those people listening that are just starting, if you think you're going to go and just like pick a business and you're going to go, you know, make millions of dollars, there's probably one person on here that that might happen to the rest of us. It's going to be messy. You're going to start with this thing and then you're going to go to that thing and you're going to fail at this. You're going to lose money here. I also lost 50 grand in the stock market. Um, I mean, dude, I've done so many stupid things. Everybody will. I think that the most important thing though is like attaching yourself. If I'm 18 listening to this, if I'm 20, if I'm 22, first of all, like what vehicle are you going to use to get you to your goals, right? Because if you think that a nine to five is the right vehicle, then I, well, I want to know what your goals are. And if you think a business is the right vehicle, great, which one? Because going and opening a Pizza Hut or a Jimmy John's, there is a, first of all, it costs a lot of money. And second of all, there's a capped amount of money you can make. You can only sell so many sandwiches in a day, right? Same thing with e-com. E-com is a little bit better. You have the internet, but okay, what about inventory? How are you going to get the inventory, right? Is it infinitely scalable? Is there assets? At the end of the day, if your product stops selling or it gets banned by Google or Amazon, do you have an asset? No, you have no asset. You've literally, even though it's a business, you've been trading your time for dollars. So it's finding the right vehicle where you have something that's scalable, you have something that creates assets, you have something that's recurring revenue, you have something that allows you to make money while you sleep, and something that's low cost to entry. And that's why I ended up in what I teach right now, which is creating digital assets that pay you every single month. And I'm not saying that's the only model. I'm just giving a point of like, if I'm 22 and I'm listening to a podcast at the gym and I'm like, why the hell should I listen to this guy? That's why. Because I've been and I've tried all those things and you need to figure out what you want first and then you need to find the model, the, the vehicle that's gonna get you there. And you're probably in a vehicle that's never gonna get you there. You're nine to five and you wanna make a million bucks a year, you're not gonna get there. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I really like your business model because I, I deemed it as like low risk to get in, like low barrier to entry, but really high right. reward, infinitely scalable. Like you said, you can just totally. do this over and over again and your costs are $12 for a domain and a couple hours of your time in order to actually set up the website or even watch enough YouTube videos or take the course to be able to actually right. get it going. And then it's just a couple of calls, right? Yeah, I mean, so the way I teach it is a little bit different. I got in... And I thought you had to build a website and you had to do the SEO and you had to get it to rank on Google. Mm. And then, okay, now in six months it's ranking. I'm going to take those phone calls. I'm going to go sell those calls. And I realized, well, what if we just called business owners first and told them I'm 
building a website that's going to get leads? Could I sell it up front, have them pay me money up front and use their money to build out my, my assets? And that's what I teach and that's what I do now. So anyway, without getting too much into the minutia, there's, there's other business models that check the box. I'm not saying that. Um, the thing is, is like, if you have goals to do X amount of money, if you want to make X amount per month and you don't want to be able to have to, you don't have to stay in one location and you want to be able to not have to be by your computer, you got to make sure A, you know what you want and B, is the business model, is the vehicle you're sitting in, you're attaching yourself to ever going to get you there? Dude, door to door sales. I was making 200 grand in five months. That's awesome money. But guess what? I couldn't go to the lake in the summer. I didn't get to do the 4th of July. I couldn't travel. I had to haul my kids out. I didn't, if I didn't work, if I got sick for a week, I didn't make money. It was a broken business model. And so no matter how high the income is, it's not worth it if, it, unless you don't have goals to, to reach those levels. But I think that's the most important thing I would say is like, you know, if you're going to college for a safety net, I got a better one for you. Go learn how to sell. Go learn how to turn nothing into something and you will get paid for the rest of your life. Even if you don't want to start a business, you will always have money coming in because people always need salespeople. 100% agree. I think sales and math are really the only two qualities they should really teach in school. 100%. And you, you could stop at basically multiplication because I, I think it's been, I saw a meme the other day. It's like another day passed that I haven't used Y equals MX plus B. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, my wife's a math major too, so I totally get it. But no, it's exactly true. You know how to add, multiply, open up a computer and do some stuff? Cool. You know how to you know how to sell? Great. Go go and just go make money. That's it, right? Yeah. Cool. You're actually you're knocking out quite a few of my questions I already had lined up, so I'm just trying to check them off right now. Um, no, you're good, man. And and again, I, the reason I'm like I asked in the beginning of who we're talking to cuz I'm just putting myself in someone's shoes, right? They listen to your podcast and, and the, they're going to go, who the hell, who's this guy? Like, who, why should I listen to this guy? Well, first of all, I don't think you should listen to anybody until you check out what they've done. And if they haven't done something that you aspire to do, why are you listening to them, right? Like, I'm not going to go and listen to somebody on a podcast that hasn't gotten and start Because like right now, my goal, it, my, my goal this entire year has been to get to the point where my companies are making a million dollars per month, Right. That's my current goal. And so right now, I'm not interested in, in getting advice or listening to a podcast from somebody that hasn't done that. Until you've done that, I'm like, so I'm trying to say, hey, if I'm in your shoes, whoever you are that's listening, I'm at the gym, why not go to the next podcast? I, I'm just trying to make this so like, okay, cool. What? Figure out what you want to do. Figure out your end goal and then go put yourself in a vehicle that can get you to that goal. That's the best piece of advice I could give to anybody and most of you guys that are listening, probably, I know all of us, me until recently, we spend weeks and weeks and weeks planning our next trip to Vegas to just get smashed or to go to Mexico for whatever. How many hours, how many minutes, how many days have you spent planning out what you want your life to look like in five years? What you want your life to look like in a year? What you want your life to look like in 10 years? Probably never. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you got goals, but have you actually sat down with a, with a pen and paper like this and, and, and turned off your phone and spent a day mapping out exactly what you want? You You've done yours. it. I got mine right next to me. I, will, I look at it every day just being like, all right, these are my annual goals. So not even the five-year plan, but like I'd go every day, I look at these and go, I need to complete these. You know, it's a promise to myself. You know, Love it, I feel like a lot of people, if you make a promise to your coach or your mom or your dad or something like that, it's harder to break that, but I feel like people break their promises to themselves being like, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And they go, ah, I'd rather have the donut. Let's give up totally. on that. Oh, I want to make this much money. Well, I don't really want to take the course or I don't really want to spend the time to do it. I'd rather sure. go get drunk with friends. Right. hundred percent. I, I completely and agree with you. Here's something powerful. I would recommend. I, I had somebody that gave me this advice. Spend time this week. Turn off your phone, go somewhere you've never been before or that you don't usually go. Don't go to your normal spot, right? Go sit down, pull out a piece of paper, not your phone, paper, and write down the your perfect day. 
what would your perfect day look like? If you could snap your fingers, what would it look like? What time would you wake up? What would you be wearing? What would it smell like? How would it feel? What would the climate be? Would you see palm trees out the window? Was, would you have a pool that was running, in, your hot tub going in your pool? What would you do for work? How, what would your house look like? What kind of car would you drive? What kind of clothes are you going to wear? You know, and what I did is about, I think it was about three years ago, I did this activity and I did, I go all out when I do this kind of stuff. I was in detail. Like I literally was like, I, I put the exact times I had a pool. I put what car I was going to drive, all of it. And I, I literally pulled this out about three months ago and almost exactly dude even i even said i wanted my garage floor to have black epoxy go watch my tiktok go look at what color my garage floor is right oh no i know and i was gonna wait for you to say is it driving a range rover is that the goal <laughs> you know what's you know what's funny is driving the range rover was actually the thing that i put on my perfect day and i just bought a g-wagon so i think it's a good trade but that's the only thing that's different, but it's kind of in the same category. Um, other than the exact car, I, I changed my mind and decided that was, that was what I wanted. But it's like, I have a pool. I have like a, the, what I do every day is exactly what I said I was going to do. I didn't want to do the little minutia in, in accounting. And so I have people doing that. I have a team of outsourcers in West Africa and a team here. I literally spend my time doing deals um, meeting interesting people, networking and growing my businesses. And like, I feel like I like have the life that I literally put on paper. So I know like, oh my gosh, whatever this, it's all a bunch of crap. I think a lot of it, you know, when you put it out in the ether, it, it's more, you just start to look for it. Not, it, not as much as you attract it. I think it's like, you actually just start to notice it. Just like when you go and buy a car, all of a sudden you start to see them everywhere. They were always there, right? You just now see it. So I think when you start like writing it down, then you just start to see it. So I don't necessarily totally buy into like law of attraction, like it's just gonna tractor beam right into your life. But I do believe if you get very, very detailed about what you want, you're gonna hit it a lot quicker. And I'm not kidding, it's scary, sim similar to what I wrote down of how my life looks right now. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, I so, feel like once you have a vision and a goal, do it. And you just push forward towards it. It's just knowing where you want to be. Totally. Totally. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, and I just redid it. it. I, I, I just is going to say, always be changing that too. Like now that I've hit that, I've, I just redid it. And the new one, it really scared me to write what I wrote on the new one because it's like, dude, it's so out there. It's such a, it's such a big jump from where I'm at right now. But it's like, my biggest regret is that on my perfect day, I didn't have a bigger vision. Because what if I would have hit it, right? What is it? Is it uh, have a private jet that takes you everywhere? That's not in there. That's not that one's not in there, dude. That's not in there. But uh, uh, surprisingly, it's not. Um, I guess we'll see. <laughs> that could be the the next the next higher step for you. That might be the one after that. We'll see. <laughs> So without giving away too much secret sauce, um, you want to kind of like talk of, so it sounds like step one, find a buyer, uh, like, you know, let's say your actual business and I'm just going to dumb it down for what I can understand. And then you can correct me where I'm wrong. Um, yeah. it sounds like step one is find a buyer. So you find someone that actually is looking for a, let's say I'm a concrete company. It seems like that seems to mm -hmm. so, be a fashion. I'm a concrete company and I do say, yes, I will be interested. Do you try to get me to commit to a certain amount a month? Uh, what, what does that negotiation usually look like? So first of all, I will say this because you said don't give away our secret sauce. I actually think the opposite and everyone that does programs, everybody that has courses, they try to dangle the carrot and go, hey, I know I got the secret thing over here, but you got to buy it, right? Well, I've actually taken the exact opposite approach. I have two different platforms. I have Facebook, I have a Facebook group and I have a Discord channel. And all of my content leads to those two things. And I'm actually the opposite, bro. I give away I give away way more in those groups than you're going to buy in most courses. And and I'm talking like I have people getting deals left and right in those groups. The difference between that and my paid stuff is like I'm going to get you there faster. I'm going to get you there. You're going to get the blueprint. You're going to get the, the scripts. You're going to get the, the contract. I'm going to tell you what niches. I'm going to just give you A to Z. You don't even have to think. You just do it, right? 
But I'm saying that because I don't believe that like you should have the carrot game. So what I do is the opposite. I realize, dude, I can tell you all of the stuff I know today. And as long as I'm growing, as long as I'm evolving, as long as my business, as long as I'm getting better at sales, new techniques, new niches, all this stuff, dude, you could copy everything today. And by tomorrow, you're already behind because the only way to copy me is to copy me and you're not me, right? Mm -hmm. So I have no problem sharing anything because 99% of people won't implement it, number one. Number two is like, why waste the time? If you're serious about it, you would. it's worth your time just to get the, pull, the full blueprint. But anyway, to your point is step one, dude, is make sure you pick the right city and niche combination. If you go into the right niche but the wrong city, you're gonna lose money. You could do concrete, but you go into Dallas, Texas, you're gonna make no money. It's competitive, it's, it, it, it's the, the cost to acquire a lead is expensive. You're gonna have to charge so much money to your business owner that it's not gonna be worth it. So number one, you have to hit the niche right, you have to hit the city right. That combination has to be dialed in or you're gonna lose money. And how do you usually choose yeah. what city slash niche? Do you look up, hey, look up this specific city of this certain level of population? So we have a specific like process that I teach, but for time's sake, you got to go into a city where it's low competition, meaning you could rank your website fairly easy if you wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. You have to go into a city that has low cost per click. And that what that means is if you go and pay for ads, it's not going to cost you a ton of money. And you also need to go into a city where there's high demand, right? Because you can have all of those things, but if there's not high demand, you could be ranked number one on Google and be willing to spend $100 a day. There's not going to be any leads for you because there's not people looking for it, right? So it has to check all of those boxes. If you check all those boxes and it's the right niche, then that's the right city. Gotcha. So we find a city... Um, I'm from Bay Area. I'm trying to think. Uh, I, I grew up in a fairly small town, probably not that small in Arkansas, but fairly small <laughs> town. Like I think it's like 60, 80,000 people. Uh, yep. Let's say I wanted a landscaping company to sell leads to. Okay. I look around. It looks like there's low competition, low cost per click, and there's a lot of fields in landscaping to be done. So okay. let's say there's a high demand. Yep. I find a buyer and I say, hey, Joe's landscaping company, um, are you interested in this? And they say, yes, we are. What sort of kind of negotiation Deal. or promises do you make in order to close the sale, I'd say? So before we do that, there's actually two more steps that I teach people to do. Number one is you need to make sure there's people in that city that are willing to pay for leads. Mm. What I mean by that is like, If you, I, I tell everyone that I teach, hey, if you're looking at, let's just use, uh, let's just use like Irvine, California, right? Southern California, right? If you're trying to do Irvine landscaping, if you go and look on, on Google and some of these other tools and there's not businesses already paying for leads, I'm going to tell you to go to the next city. Here's why. It's 2022, Right. If people are not convinced that if they spend money on marketing, it's going to make them money, then God help them, okay? I'm not in the business of trying to convince somebody that advertising works. I'm only looking for people who already believe in advertising, and I just want to show them that my opportunity, my leads are a way better option than what they're paying for. Mm. So I have people in my program, they actually have to build a list of five to 10 people that are already sold on leads already sold on buying leads before you even start calling and i learned this when i used to do door-to-door -door sales i used to sell home security right mm -hmm. and in home security i would i just realized dude if i start going down the street i can start looking for the, the houses that already have home security dude if they already have adt for example because i wasn't with adt why don't i just knock on the door because i already know they're paying for it so why don't now all I have to do is convince them that, hey, this is the same price. Look how much better this is. You get this, 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 and this for the same price. Same exact thing. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Don't go and try and sell somebody who doesn't even believe in the internet leads. Go sell people who are already paying for other services mm -hmm. and say, look, let's just have a conversation. So that's step two. Step three is you need to go and get a handful of leads before you try and pitch the deal. Okay. And some people are going to go, well, how do you get it leads if you don't even have a website? Good question. 
So what I teach you how to do and what I would tell you how to do is go to a web builder, Wix, Weebly, whatever, Squarespace, build a one-page landing page, one page, homepage only. And there's certain elements this thing has to have. It needs to have a phone number. It needs to have a quote form. It needs to have these things that I've, I've figured out. But you build a one-page landing page that has a tracking number. And then what we're going to do is go to Google and start paying for advertising and push traffic to that one pager. And I hope we're not losing anyone. It's very simple. A one-page website, a landing page, traffic with Google, you're just going to push that landing page and you're going to start getting phone calls. Mm -hmm. Right? And those phone calls, now you're going to call that list of business owners that's already sold. And instead of calling and saying, hey, Kian, uh, you want to buy my leads? I'm calling you and saying, hey, hey, Mr. Business Owner, I've got this job. Uh, it's, it's a tree service job. Her name is Susan. She's got this 15-foot oak, this 30-foot oak tree. She lives over on XYZ Street. Can I hand it off to you? What's that guy going to say? Of course. And then he's going to go, who are you? Who are you, bro? And I'm going to say, oh, I, sorry, sorry. My name's Nick. The reason I'm calling you is I have a website and a phone number that's getting tree service jobs. I don't even do tree service. Can you take Susan? But By the way... I do want you to know, I'm not trying to like confuse you here. I'm looking for somebody to take these jobs on an ongoing basis. So let me give you Susan. And what if I give you three or four of these and we talk in a couple days about doing this on an ongoing basis? Would you be open to that? No commitment, no attack, no, no strings attached. You just take a couple of these for free. What do you think about that? Easy. Yes. What do you think someone's going to say that? Right? Imagine somebody calls... Somebody called me right now and said, hey, I, have, I can get you four people who need leads right now for my lead gen business, right? My, my digital real estate business. I got four people that want leads. I'm not even going to ask you for money until you go and, 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 and talk to these people. I'm going to give them to you for free. I'd be stupid to say no, mm -hmm. right? And then here's where the gangster part comes in. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, the question I was going to have is let's say there's you go on there and you see – two to three people that are that are buying leads on the same tree landscaping service do you and you yep. get three leads do you divvy them up one 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 and have them almost like nope. bid against each other or how do you do it no nope. i don't i don't like that i like to go with one company and i really like to play my angle of like hey let's let, like i can kind of use that and say hey before i go talk to any of the other companies i want to let i want to give you a crack at this then it creates a little bit of urgency but if i'm just like because here's the other thing too like one lead, you know, it's kind of hard. I like to give between three and five of these for free before I even talk about money. And this is what's so cool. And this is, I just created a YouTube video about this like an hour ago. You do not need sales experience to do what I'm teaching. You do not need to be a salesperson. Here's why. Uh, let me ask this, Kian. Do you have do you have a Costco or a Sam's Club where you live? Uh, Costco. Where Are you in the Bay right now? I am in uh, San Diego. Okay, cool. So you're in San Diego, you've got a Costco. I don't know about your Costco, but my Costco, when you go on Saturdays, you know how to get the samples? Mm -hmm. they, those aren't salespeople, bro. Those, those people in my town are old. Those people in my town are crotchety. Those people in my town are not happy to be there, and they're handing out samples. And guess what happens? I come home every time with something I didn't plan on going to Costco for. Because you got that free sample. You, you got to taste because I got like the free sample. One more. That's it. You they put somebody who's not a salesperson behind the counter. They weren't even nice to you. They just handed you the sample, and the product was good, and therefore they sell a certain amount of people. So imagine if you did the same thing as Costco, but every person that you gave samples to was already shopping for your product. Then it's an easy. Like you said, it's not even a sale. It's, oh, yeah, you want to buy the rest of them? All right, I'll, I'll sell, yeah. you know, I can sell them to you. 100%. That's why I have over, at the time of recording this, I have over 110 people, 110 interviews in my program of students who have gotten deals. I've got, some, I've got one guy doing 45K a month. I've got uh, multiple people doing 30K, some doing 20. By the way, this is all in the Facebook group, all in the Discord. Like You could go and cross-check this. I'm not just throwing out random numbers. I make everybody show me their Stripe account before they can post. Um, that's why people with no sales experience are throwing numbers. And not everyone's doing 45K, but I'm just saying, like, mm -hmm. I have got a lot of people and they're not salespeople. And that is why it's because the, if you give the product first and don't require any kind of commitment and your product is good, 
you are going to sell and you're not going to have to really do much selling. The product's going to kind of sell itself. That makes sense. hundred percent. So you get this guy sold. You gave me, let's, I like this, you know, role play exercise. I'm, yeah. I've been given three to five leads and I call you. I'm like, Nick, I want more of these. What yeah. does it take for me to become a partner with you? Awesome. So, and that does happen. It's funny. Sometimes you'll get them to like, Hey, I'm ready to do this. Like, what do we got to do? It doesn't happen every time, but usually there's that moment where you just have, it's kind of that sweet spot. It's time to go. So what I teach everyone to do is what you do is you schedule a zoom call with the business owner, right? Just like this face to face. And what we do is we make a list of all the possible objections that might come up. Got to talk to my spouse. I got, I got to think about it. Blah, 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 right? And we strategically, and this is what I teach inside the program, is we overcome the objections before we get on the call. I don't want to get on the call and have to say, you tell me you got to think about it, and I got to go, oh, what you got to think about, blah, blah, like do that whole thing. I did that in door-to-door -door sales. It was a nightmare. I hate hard closing. I'm not a hard closer. I don't like it. I'm actually very, very much the opposite. So what we do is we overcome all the objections before we get on that Zoom call so that when we get on the Zoom call, we go over price, we go over the partnership, we go over the contract, and we get the deal, and we go get another one. Make sense? Yeah, so it sounds like you kind of, I call it diffusing the bomb before it is even a bomb. Uh, just saying, hey, before we start, let's say like the, oh, I need to talk to my spouse. Before we talk, are you able to make the decision by yourself? for proceeding forward or is there anyone else that should be involved in this conversation and just getting that out of the way before it becomes even a, oh I need to talk to someone else because they already said I'm, I'm good to go if if this all works out so that kind of exactly it, dude. it's I call it I call it the setup the close mm -hmm. is in the setup so we actually if you go in my Facebook group or my discord channel and you go watch because a lot of the people in my program they'll post some of their closes if you were to watch my closes you'd go, dude, of course you're closing these business owners. These guys are the easiest closes ever. They don't even object. What you don't know is I already overcame all the objections. They already found out, hey, if you tell me you want to think about it, I'm out. I'm not interested in doing that. Like we're doing a yes or no on the call. And there's ways to do it so there's not a bunch of buying pressure. I just have a very backwards um, approach to sales. I think everybody talks about how do you overcome objections? How do you overcome objections? You know what I talk about? How do you eliminate objections? Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, the difference. They call it a uh, straight line selling versus like spin selling. Straight line selling is like car salesmen that are like, buy now, what do you need to talk to your wife for? Da da da, because you only get so much time with them. But being able to create that relationship because it's not like you just sell them the lead once and can walk away. It's knowing that that relationship, so you can't just pressure them one time to do it, of creating that upfront contract. Hey, I really don't want to waste our time on a Zoom call. Are you going to be able to give me a yes or no on that call? Uh, no pressure if you're not, but I just don't want to waste the time on a Zoom call if you're not. That's it. Right? Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's, uh, if you, here's what I've learned in doing sales for 10 years. The objections are going to come, dude. You're not going to avoid them. So if they're going to come later, why don't you just bring them up first on your time uh, and you can control it and overcome it because I do it with everything, dude. So like, for example, when I do a deal with a business owner that does concrete, you know what I say, say to them right when they're getting the deal? I say, when I'm closing the deal, I say, hey, just so you know, Jack, just so you know, uh, Travis, in December, you live in Ohio, you live in Cleveland. In December, spoiler alert, the leads are gonna slow down a bit or a lot. It's called Christmas. It's called the winter. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you calling me, bugging me on Christmas, but I got a deal for you. In the spring, when the leads pop because it's tax returns and it's warm, I'm not going to call you and ask you for more money. So you don't call me and ask me where my, your leads are at on Christmas. I won't ask you for more money in the spring. It all evens out. That's the beauty of doing a flat fee deal. And if I say that to Travis or to, to Terry or whatever, guess who doesn't call me during Christmas? Terry. But if I forget and I just wait, you know who's calling me on December 15th and pissed off and ready to cancel and ready to, to just relieve bad reviews is Terry. Mm -hmm. You say it up front and you control the way that it's delivered. And when it comes like, oh yeah, he told me that was going to happen. It's, it's, it's like month to month with these guys or no. maybe be like six month agreement, six, six month agreement. 
And then from there, we roll it into a year. It's what I train. You can do whatever you want, though. I mean, that's just one guy, but it works really well. However, the only time this changes is in like June, July, and August. We typically either do a nine-month or a three-month because if you do a contract in July, it's going to end in December. And then he's going to pro- – he or she is probably going to go, oh, that's kind of a slow month. I don't think I'm going to renew. Mm-hmm. So we just get strategic. As long as your contract doesn't end around December, then you do a six month. If it does, then either do a three month or a nine month and you're, you're golden. That's it. Gotcha. So you just try to control when it ends. So it always ends in a hot season. In a favorable time. Yeah. And it's not because I'm being manipulative. It's because people don't remember that last spring they got 50 leads when they were only supposed to get 20 and they, all they know is, Oh, I only got 12 this month. It's like, yeah, but what about when you got 50, but they forget, right? So, and then the last thing, dude, just to wrap like that whole sequence up is once we get the deal, once I've inked the deal, I've signed it and I got the credit card, then I go and I buy the domain. Then I go and I do the content. Then I go and I build the actual website that I own. That's the asset. And that asset is the thing that's going to pay me again and again and again. And so that's the whole game is like, instead of just building all these websites, spending money on hosting and tracking numbers and all these things and having to wait six months, we're speeding this process up, getting them a couple leads, closing the deal, and letting them get – they're getting leads the whole time because the ads are going, and we're building out the website at the same time. And as soon as the website starts to get traffic, then we're turning off the ads, and we're getting everything organic. And then your profit margin usually doubles. Okay. That was going to be my next question of like if I'm giving you $2,000 a month for concrete, yep. how much of that goes towards ad spend, and then when does your margin kind of – it sounds like it breaks free at a three month or six month point. If you do the, the, the remember what I said at the beginning, if you choose the right city, it shouldn't take you more than three to five months. But if you choose the wrong city, you might be 18 months and it's never going to rank because you're now against a bunch of tough competition. That's why it's, I drill so hard on everyone gets into this. They're like, I'm just going to go throw up a site. Okay, good luck. I've done so many of the wrong city and lost so much money. I'll spend a week looking at one city I'll spend an extra week because it will save me six months. Mm. It reminds me of that saying they have in real estate where they say, you make your money when you buy, not when you sell, right? If you buy a home that's $60,000 for $60,000 less than it's actually worth, it doesn't matter if you sell it for less than it's worth in two years, you're still making money because you bought it at a good time, right? Exactly. If you choose the right city, you don't have to get that much money out of it per month or, or, or even like do that well because it's going to rank really quickly. You're going to have all this organic traffic coming in that's free traffic, right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's what's so cool about this dude. All in all, you can honestly go and put deals together. All you do is spend a little bit of money on ads, a little bit of sweat equity, and then you're going to use the customer, the business owner's money to actually build out the website. Like tell me where else you can go and do that. Like you can build assets with someone else's money that you own that continue to pay you over and over and over. Like, I mean, I'll wait. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have a good answer for you. There's not an answer. There's no one, no one on here is going to give me an answer. I've been asking for this answer on YouTube and everything else. I'm like, find me another business model that meets all these criteria. I'm in. I'll, I'll, I'll start it and test it side by side, but I just can't find anything that checks all the boxes. Right. And the last thing I should note is this. I should have said this at the beginning. Some of you guys, bless your hearts, that have been listening to me. Why should you listen to me? 99% of the people out there that teach this kind of stuff, you know what they did? They went and they made $10,000 one month, and then they went and started a program, and they're like, oh, I'm going to get rich selling everyone how to do it, right? I have been doing this for six years. I made seven figures in 2020. I made seven figures in 2021 before I even started talking about teaching this. So... I don't, this isn't some theory. The reason I know what city to go into, what ads to set up, what uh, website, what the website should look like, how to talk to the business owners, is because I've made millions of dollars doing digital real estate before I ever decided to like, oh, let me teach other people how to do it. Yeah. So I should have said that in the beginning. So anyone that I lost halfway through, Probably should have said that again, but but that's the reality. It's like 99% of the people out there, if you're looking at having someone teach you how to do it, first thing you should ask them, how much money you made from doing this, bro? And they're going to get real uncomfortable. Well, uh, but, eh, eh, eh. yeah, let me, sh- let me see your tax. You made how much? Let me see your tax return. In in my Facebook group, you'll find my tax return. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, show me your Stripe account, bro. And I don't want them to see the Stripe account of the students that you're teaching this to. I want to see business owner Stripe account. And they're going to start sweating and they're going to they're going to go all over the place. They don't make that much money, dude. That's the thing I've been really, really careful of. It's like I didn't want to start talking about it until I'd done it and I'd mastered it backwards, forwards, sideways, and like whatever so that when I talk, you can you, you can feel when someone knows what they're talking about and someone just has just knows how to talk well, right? Yeah, I, I always see that with people doing e-com of like, oh, I'm you know, a million in revenue. And you're like, cool, what is the profits? How much did ad spend? And they always try to like go, well, this thing's creating a million dollars a year. Well, I have no way of telling what sort of ads you ran. There's no way for me to really verify that because you can oh. just like create something else to just send it, send traffic towards that website. No idea of what the ad cost is. Those extra numbers really can take away from these bigger, larger numbers of million dollar revenue to made 20k and you know what i'll bet most of those people most of those people are probably showing you the numbers they've made from selling their course oh <laughs> a lot of the time yeah the the tiktok yeah. course of uh buy this course on tiktok gets sold real quick i feel like yeah no so for sure to, to rewind just a little bit so i'm, I'm just taking going through my notes I go to find a city that has low competition, low cost per click, high demand. I find people that are already paying for leads. I'm not trying to convince anyone of my marketing strategy, let's say. Uh, get a handful of leads just on a free website. We'll be able to, and this is where we'd probably run Google ads because this free website has no chance of getting traffic, probably. Yep. Uh, get those leads, Doesn't. hand off those leads as those free samples, get their mouth watering, set up that Zoom call with an upfront contract saying, hey man, I need you to be able to make a decision. This is what we're realistically yep. going for. They have no objections for you already. Uh, you get them in on a six month agreement, nine month agreement, 12 month agreement based off of whenever this end season would be. Um, and then you agree on the price. And then that's kind of the question mark for me of like, what do you agree on? Do you base it off of how much a lead is worth for that person? I'm sure a concrete lead makes more money than a tree mm -hmm. removal lead. Let's Day. Um, yeah so i used to be the guy that used to used to charge people based on how i felt how confident i was and how much i thought they could afford so i used to look at people and i would be like oh he said he went on a vacation last week he's probably got money or he drives this truck he's probably got money right or they do like i would ask people how much money did you guys make last year and if they would say seven million i would charge them more than the guy that said he made 50 grand right mm-hmm that's not what I do anymore. I And I teach this in depth, but I, I'm very mathematical. And so here's what I do is I look at the worst case scenario that could happen and I come up with the, uh, I, I do a little formula of what they're gonna make based on a couple of different numbers and I charge on worst case scenario, not best case. Does that make sense? So here's a bad example. This is what you don't wanna do. Hey, Mr. Business Owner, I think I can get you 50 leads per month, and you already told me you close at 50%, right? Yeah. Okay. And what's your average job size? $5,000? Okay. So, okay, let me do the math, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Looks like you're going to make five or 10, you're going to make $10,000 net profit every single month. So I'm going to charge you five grand a month. That's a bad idea because guess what's going to happen? You're going to have to now get 50 leads or that guy's going to cancel, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what I, here's what I teach. Hey, Mr. Business Owner, uh, I think I can get you 50 leads. Here's three other websites that I've done this with, but let's just look at worst case scenarios. What if I get you 12, 12 leads? That's less than one a day. And I know you can close at 50%, but what if you only close at 20%? And I know your ticket item is 5,000, but what if it's only 3,500? And I do everything worst case. And then I do the numbers and it says, okay, looks like even based on that, if you close at 20%, you're gonna make $2,500 a month net so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna charge that guy 1250 a month i usually split it i usually divide it by two i usually divide it by two sometimes by three depending on the service and i say worst case scenario i only give you 12 leads worst case scenario you only close at 20 percent worst case scenario your average ticket's less than normal you're still gonna double your money with me there is literally no risk unless you are not going to answer the calls and run these leads in which case don't do it that makes sense that's it. Yeah, and then your your math to know that beginning number of I worst case scenario I think I'm generating twelve leads. 
are you choosing that as a conservative number? I mean, that sounds like just more of an experience thing from your end. Yeah, it's just a sweet spot based on the CPC that I recommend, based on the niches I recommend. And at 12 leads at these in these certain niches, it's going to be enough to charge one to 2000 bucks per month per deal. So I say 12 because if you go into concrete, tree service, et cetera, you go into the cities I teach you to go into. By the way, it has nothing to do with population. Everyone gets all up in bunches about population. Think about it like this. Would you rather rank a website and have a website in Gilbert, Arizona that's not very small, it's a little suburb of Phoenix, or even let's say Queen Creek, which you'd probably never heard of, or would you rather have one in New York City? Um, it's a trick question. I'd way rather have the one in Arizona because in New York City, it's freaking skyscrapers and penthouses. Who needs artificial grass, right? Yeah, probably no one. So, so, and that's an extreme example, but I'm saying like, it doesn't matter. I don't care about population. I, I make, there's a city that I live close to that has literally has 30,000 people in that I'm making $1,200 a month on a website. Yeah. Like if you're a pesticide salesman, you don't care about how many people there are. You care about how many bugs there are, right? And how many people are dealing with okay. that. So how prevalent that problem is. That's it. Nice. That's it. Cool. Yeah. Those so again, and that's the cool part. So you do that deal and then it's like you get your first deal at a thousand bucks a month and you go, huh, that was not that bad. And you start doing some numbers. You go, wait a second. All I have to do is do that 20 times and I'm going to make 20 grand a month. Yep. yep. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That? And by the way, the most, by the way, you're like, well, what about ads? The most you're ever going to spend on ads is $600 a month because based on the CPC that I give you, you're never going to spend more than $20 a day in the niches and the city criteria I give you. So you're never going to make less than 40% if you follow the way I teach. Now, there's other ways to teach it. There's other ways to do it, but I don't have any deals I make less than 40% on yeah. with zero organic traffic, dude. That's just with a landing page. Yeah, I like the business model, man. I, I do. It's it's perfect for the niche. I always I've talked to a lot of real estate investors, and it's like, well, I took my fifty k down and did this, and you're like, everyone kind of rolls their eyes in the background, it's going, well, I don't have fifty k. What do I do at this point? But this is no excuse, low barrier to entry. It's just, do you have the will to to do it? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, dude. I, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad like everybody else, and I'm like, I need real estate, right? But you need money to get real estate. And I know someone's going to go, oh, there's wholesaling and creative financing. Shut up, bro. I'm talking about everyone else that doesn't have time for that, okay? Average person. So here's my game. And I'm teaching everyone I work with, like, why not use this to pay your bills and take the excess cash and use that to parlay into physical real estate? Because don't get me wrong, there's elements of physical real estate that's, that, 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 phys that digital doesn't have. For example, depreciation, right? But... Why, instead of waiting 10 years to stack up a little bit of money or five years, why not just start it now, pay your bills with passive income, go all in on digital and use that to pay your bills and have assets and use that to buy more assets. That's what I've done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think, I think your method especially gets you money now and real estate's more of gets you money in the future. Even totally. if it grows at a quote unquote faster rate, the money now is money today is worth a lot more than money 30 years from now. For sure, for sure. And let, let's just do this last thing is, what's the downsides of this business model? Because any business model that doesn't have a downside is a scam, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it can't be all good, right? Well, I've been looking at this, shooting holes in it. Here's the biggest downside I found, and this is actually a real thing. The biggest downside to this business model is people don't treat it like a real thing. People, they because it costs so little to get into, right? Because you can like literally tomorrow, I had just yesterday in, in my Facebook group, I had a guy that joined 20 days ago, just landed his first deal, didn't know what real estate, digital real estate was like mm -hmm. four weeks ago, right? Because they people hear these stories, the majority of people, you know what they do? Is they go in and they go and they dabble. They put a toe in the water. They're half pregnant, right? They try one campaign and they do it for a month and then they're like, oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? And it's like, it's so easy to get into that people don't take it seriously because think about like this, Kian. 
if you had to, if you were going to open up a, a McDonald's, I, I've heard you need like a, a million or 1.2 liquid cash, right? To open a McDonald's. If you're going to do a McDonald's, you're going to get the funding. You're going to get the employees. You're going to scout the real estate. You are going to treat it like a business and you are only going to do it if you do that. When you're in this, you buy a program you start running some deals and all of a sudden you're like, oh, it didn't work. I'm done. Right? So I almost wish there was a higher barrier to entry and we would see people taking this more seriously. Um, that to me is the biggest downfall. I know it sounds like kind of a stupid answer, but I'm telling you right now, I've seen so many people take, this is what happens to everyone. They come in, they see this, it clicks. I guarantee everyone that's listening to this, there's not one person that's going, oh, that's stupid. Build s simple websites and rent them for thousands of dollars. No one's saying that's stupid. Everyone's going, oh, that makes sense. Or, oh, that's genius. That's what everybody says, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody that gets into this, if they're smart, they just go for it. If you're like me, I, I heard about this and I started doing it and then I got too smart. I got too, I'm like, you know what? It's not cool. I don't want to be, you know, in local lead generation. I want to go and start a software company. And this is before the term digital real estate was cool with crypto and stuff or, or with NFTs. And so I went and started a software company because I didn't think it was cool. Tried it for a year and I ended up right back doing digital real estate. So it's funny because I see this thing and people will come in, they won't, they won't happen for a month and they make this big round, they try the software company and this gig and this gig and this gig and all of a sudden they're like, dude, I started when, when you did six years ago but I stopped and now they're like, I'm back and I tried all of it, let's do this for real. Yeah, I think it's um, because it lacks that, that financial commitment. I always say like, you know, a gym membership that makes you sign a 12 month contract, you're way more likely to go to that gym if it's not a month to month contract on a planet fitness or something. You're less likely to go to planet fitness than you are to whatever Equinox that already has this $350 a month charge for you. Shout out to Equinox. Equinox dope by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I went to the one, I just went to the one like two months ago in uh, right there in Irvine. I think it was in Irvine or maybe it was some, but anyway, great gym. Just side note. So are you, so you travel a lot. You're in St. George. Now. St. George, Utah, which. St. George, Utah, which is a two-hour drive from Las Vegas, Nevada. I am dangerously close to that city, and I am there almost every week. So that would probably be my second home. Um, and then I spend the majority of my time after that in West Africa because I have a team of five VAs that does 99% of the work for my digital real estate websites and my clients. So those are kind of the three places. I'm in Vegas, Utah, and Sierra Leone, which is a country in West Africa, for those of you that have no idea what that, where that's at. And then why, why do you keep name dropping Irvine? Do you go there often or no? Um, so I, I have some, uh, well, number one is my wife's a Disney aficionado. So we have season passes. So okay. when we go down there, I've got friends in that area. And so I typically, she goes to Disneyland and I go and, and, and work in, in like Orange County. Okay. That makes sense. So I just... I've just been there a few times, but I would much prefer to be there than in Anaheim. So that's why. <laughs> Makes sense. Last yeah. Last sorry, anyone that's from Anaheim. Yeah, uh, What's that? Last two questions before I let you go. Uh, yeah. you know, appreciate all the time. Uh, sure. I, I think we've definitely gone over. Um, but one, what's your favorite book? And if it's very popular, what's your second favorite book that's not very popular that you think a lot of people haven't read so i've read rich dad poor dad what's a book you would recommend that isn't as popular dude this book right here is it's a sleeper because it's just came out recently but this book right here which anyone that is just listening it's called what it takes steven schwartzman this guy owns blackstone and anyone that doesn't know what blackstone is go type it in it's i think it's worth I don't know what, but this guy's worth thirty-two billion, um, dude. It's I've given this book out to I think five people. I don't give books out that much, but this is what this this is the premise of the whole book. This line on page one, he says, "I've always believed that it's just as hard to achieve big goals as it is small ones." That is like what this book is about, and so for anybody that like loves the idea of thinking big, doing big things. This is like such an under the radar book. I think it just came out this year, but I've, I've given this to my dad. I've given this to multiple friends. I give this to my attorney. I get like I give this to partners. This is, I would say this one and my second favorite book is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. 
Who died? You read that? I have not. No, bro. I haven't read either. I'm, I'm I'm real tired. You can see I've got a bunch of business books. Like I even had a YouTube video. I'm really tired of business books. Like they're they're all just regurgitated stuff, right? But business biographies by billionaires and interesting people they fascinate me. So like this is a business biography. Phil Knight, uh, Shoe Dog is a business biography. Um, the, the Elon Musk book that was written by Ashley Vance, business biography. Those are like my favorite types of books because you literally get to study billionaires. This is the one, dude. No questions asked, hands down, best book. I gave it to my dad and he he's like, thanks, whatever. And then he picked it up and he's called me a couple times in the last month. He's like, dude, that book you gave me is really good. And I'm like, I told you. I told you, dude. I wasn't just going to give you some stupid book. Guess what I'm reading right now? This is the book I'm on right now. Another business biography by the OG, dude. John D. Rockefeller. I even Titan by Rockefeller. It's a, it's a thick one, dude. But this is a fascinating, dude. So... That's my favorite category, business biographies of billionaires and interesting people. That is what I like to read and everything. And, and I like to read about uh, cartels. <laughs> that's, that's a type of business. <laughs> dude, there's a lot of business lessons in that, dude. Oh, yeah. And then last question is, we've talked about your course. Um, not trying to be a full plug on your course, but if I wanted to buy the course today, where do I go? Where do I find your course? So they, I'll, I'll, I'll even this out because I, I think some people, they listen to my content or they see me on YouTube. And they're like, dude, this guy's like, he, he, he's hamming it up for camera or he, like I have people literally, they're like, dude, is this guy on Adderall? Is this guy on cocaine? Like, why has he got so much energy? I, I was in 2019, I was $60,000 in debt, $60,000. And I have not only paid that off, but I've been able to buy multiple pieces of real estate, I wanted a swimming pool. I bought some cool cars. <laughs> I put a lot of money in the bank all through digital real estate. So I get excited because, dude, I don't care what situation you're in, what you're looking to do. You can use this vehicle to accomplish it. So that's number one. Number two is I, I have a backwards answer for that. Um, I do have a website, digitallandlords.com. But I have people that DM me on, or they'll comment and say, "What's where's the link to your course? Well, first of all, we do an application process because we're very, very careful about who we let in because that's how we grow. We get people in, we help them get results, and we showcase those results so people can see them, right? And so if I have somebody that DMs me and says, hey, can I get a link to your application? I say, if you can't find a link to the application, it's not, it's not a good fit. You're not ready. So I know I've lost deals over this. I've had, I, I literally will tell people it's out there. I'll give you a hint. It's in Facebook and Discord. Go find it. And if you're not willing to go find the link and, and do the homework, I don't want you in any way because I'm not trying to convince you that this is the right business model or that my program works. I'm just trying to find out if this is the right vehicle that you should be taking and then we'll make something work. So my answer is you can go to digitallandlords.com. That'll lead you through the funnel. But um, I, like, I kind of want people to find it on their own because it, it gets them more sold on the process and on my program throughout it. And if they're not a good fit, it's going to uh, dis disqualify them, if you will. Yeah, it makes it easier. If, if I didn't take the time to even try to figure out where it is, probably not going to take the time to actually do or implement anything in the course. Nope. So that's my answer is you can start there. Go to digitallandlords.com or you can just go you know, find me on YouTube or whatever, type in my name. And Digital Landlords is the name of my, my company. It's the name of my, uh, my course. But uh, you, you'll find it. And if you're not willing to find it, then like I'm not, I'm not going to be a good fit because I don't really tolerate. Like I'm not really a hand holder. I'm like, let's get, let's get stuff done. Let's go make money.